So in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate two major benefits of using CSS variables. The first one is that you can um, save yourself from repetition and make global changes to, say, the spacing or the font size of elements without having to update things in multiple places. So for instance, let's say I've got this heading here. I've got a selector which targets it. I'll just give it um, a background color so you can see it um, padding I'm about to give it. Um, so it's quite nice in, when you're designing sites to use consistent spacing across all the different elements from the header right down in the main content to the footer. Um, and so you might find yourself, say, going to the padding properties. I'll just set um, padding on all of this on all sides um, and say always setting 16 pixels, let's say. But um, if you then decide, actually, I'd like everything on the site to have a bit more room. Um, there's a lot of replacing of the these like hard-coded uh, fixed values if you're to find things in pixels. So that's where CSS variables come in. So you can enter something like, um, I'll explain the syntax of this in a minute, but say um, we've got, I've defined some variables called spacing 0 to 4 and I could adjust this. So I could say 1 if I only want a little bit um, or 0 if I want I want nothing, uh, or two, or three, etc. So I've defined some grades. Um, well, I'll move on to what these definitions in a minute. And so that's nice because I could then, say, find another element which isn't targeted with the same selector because it's not really related, like these boxes here. Um, I could target these guys, um, and uh, let's create a selector for all three, create, and then I can set the padding. Uh, to the variable, so say 4 um, or maybe less if I wanted. Um, I think it looks better with 4. But um, so these, you know, I've got a different selector. I'm not necessarily applying the same styles to this heading as I am uh, these boxes, but apart from the spacing. And so it keeps things consistent if I can uh, use my variable, which I've defined called spacing 4. If I ever want to change it, um, I would go to the the definitions, um, which I'll I'll come back to in a sec here, um, where I've got this spacing, and I could adjust for the site wide um, these values here, um, and it'll change everything. So that's pretty cool. Um, but let's go back to the um, other main benefit. So I've defined for my this is my selector for the headings here. And I've set the spacing to three. Uh, and the other great thing about CSS variables is that you can make changes responsively uh, without actually having to use these tabs on each of your selectors. So if I uh, drag down to, I think the breakpoint was, yes, yeah, so it's like seven, six, eight down here, you can see that the spacing's just got a bit smaller. Um, we've defined the spacing as three um, on this All Devices tab, um, but it's automatically got shrunk down because on our variable definitions we've got here, um, we're using the root element, which means that they will apply to everything on the page. Root is just an, an alias for the HTML element, which contains everything. And so we've defined various things like font family and font sizes and spacing. We've got our spacing three, um, there's two rem, um, uh, on the all devices tab. And then we've just updated the value of those variables on the less than seven, six, eight, um, tab. So variable, uh, spacing three is now just 0.75 rem. Uh, and that means that the, our selector will, um, the value for space, uh, spacing three, um, will change when uh, the screen size is below this breakpoint mark. Um, and if the ver and it, so it changes dynamically, it's called a dynamic variable. And so it means that we didn't even need on this uh, selector, which targets the headings, we didn't need to specify uh, a smaller um, spacing size. It just happened automatically. So with this system we have where we have our global variables here, um, which are defined just the kind of the standard ones on the all devices tab, and then we've made some adjustments. I've just done it on just one tab here, just the breakpoint of below 768, but you can 
you can tweak, um, you have multiple breakpoints and you can adjust them as granularly as you wish. Um, and by doing that, we've set ourselves a lot of work. We just handle kind of all of the responsiveness via these tabs up here, which are just on this one selector, which defines our, our global variables. And then they will have an impact on, the, on all of our selectors over the whole site. So that's a huge time saver. So just to give you another example, um, what have we done with this selector? We've got the, uh, I just set, oh yeah, so I just set the padding, spacing three. Uh, we could also uh, adjust the font size. So um, well, I'm going to type it because uh, I've been, Maxime will remember what you, um, the kind of variables that you enter here. Um, so you only have to enter them once, but the first time you would say var and then brackets, and then inside the brackets, um, it's just the name of the variable. So font size, oops, uh, let's say three, or maybe six, because it's a heading. So I've defined the font size here, uh, and then again, if we scroll down to below the uh, 768 breakpoint, um, the smaller font size that we set to, for screen sizes below 768 starts to kick in. And we've just got that for free out of the box. Uh, <coughs> with font families, you probably wouldn't change font families responsibly, but just um, you would still, it's still helpful to define a font family as a, as a variable, because then if you change your mind about the font family, you've only got one place to update it. And that's our global variables selector up here, which I've put at the top. So two distinct advantages that are both awesome with CSS variables. Um, so there's, you need to, Maxime doesn't have a facility for editing variables via the UI yet, so you do need to use this code editor tab. Um, but what, but it, what learning the syntax here, we've got dash dash and then whatever name you want, and then whatever value is well worth doing. Um, so yeah, I think, oh, uh, actually one thing before I finish, uh, this, you'll obviously, um, this, CSS variables are a good candidate for defining colors for the site. Uh, Microthema, so far we've been using defining variables here and then in our selector we've been, uh, you, you, you could enter the code here, or but we've been using the, the UI fields. Um, Microthema at this time of um, recording the video on the 28th of February doesn't have a field for uh, entering CSS variables, uh, so I'm going to fix that real soon. Okay, thanks a lot.